Do you wanna try your hand at furniture flipping but you don't wanna sand and you don't wanna make repairs? A great place to start is buying easy to build furniture like from Ikea. So I'm gonna show you how I took three different furniture pieces from Ikea and made them my own and my Ikea hacks start right now. Today's IKEA hack, I'm gonna be using the Ivar cabinet. Now, this is a system that you can, they have a bunch of frames and other things for, but I had an idea to turn this into a little bar situation or a little media cabinet. Um, while I was putting this together, I decided to go ahead and put some paper, wallpaper on the back that I had just to give it a little bit of interest because otherwise it was gonna be very boring. And this is what it looked like assembled. This one was pretty easy to put together. The hardest part is getting the doors to hang right, but the hinges are adjustable so you can and move those up and down to get it to hang evenly. To stain my cabinet, I'm gonna be using the Lily Moon Paint Old Smoky Gel Stains in the color Old Fashion. This is a dark, warm brown. And I'm starting with a slip coat of water to help with the open time of this stain. This stain is a water-based stain and I'm gonna apply it with an applicator pad. I really love using water-based stains because they're a lot safer, they don't smell, and they dry really quickly so I'm not having to wait hours and hours for a stain to dry to move on with my project and you're not going to have all those yucky fumes and you don't have to worry about your rags catching fire and having those dry out. So those are the many, many reasons that I love working with water-based stains. And I think I can just get more of an even finish. Sometimes with oil-based stains, they don't absorb into the wood, especially around the knots. And with a water-based stain, it's kind of more of like a paint consistency. So you can really cover those up and get some really good coverage. This stain also has a top coat built into it. If you want a little bit more protection, you can always put a top coat on top of this, but I love that it has a little bit of protection built in as well. This only takes 20 to 30 minutes to dry. So while everything is drying, I'm gonna work on my trim pieces. I'm setting up my miter saw stand to cut this trim into two feet increments. It's four feet long, so I'm cutting it in half and I can actually set this stand to cut the same length every time. So it saves a lot of time. I can just take each piece and do the cuts over and over again without having to measure each time. Okay, this was honestly the longest part of the entire makeover. So I have enough sticks to cover the front of the doors. You're gonna see the cool pattern that I ended up coming up with, but I had to individually stain each one of these trim pieces and I had to make sure that it was nice and even and get all three sides and the ends too, since all of that is gonna be exposed. But it was definitely worth staining these before I attached them to my piece because I just think it would give me an uneven finish. So it, gave, it was a lot easier definitely staining these before I put them on. I'm gonna do this staggered pattern all the way across the doors. I use my level to put the first one on and then I'm using a scrap piece of that trim for my spacer. I'm using my Ryobi 18 gauge brad nailer to attach these to the door and I'm using a really small brad nail so that they don't go through the door. It's so easy to use and you don't have to worry about having like the hose and the big air compressor and it has adjustments on it so you can sink the holes a little bit. I'm using that spacer to make this look nice and neat and keep the same distance between each piece of trim. And I'm kind of keeping the nails in the same area too, just so it gives a uniform look. I am not gonna fill these because I think it looks pretty good without filling it. And I didn't wanna risk like having the stain look different than the wood. I started the first piece on each door with the level and then I just used the spacer after that. My original idea was to flute these all the way across and even on the sides with the trim piece going all the way from the top of the drawer to the bottom but the price of this trim has gone up since the last time I used it by over a dollar it's two dollars and 68 cents for four feet of this so that was going to be like 150 dollars for the whole cabinet and I just couldn't do it I wanted to do a more cost effective way so just fluting the front of the doors and having this staggering pattern saved me a bunch of money it only cost 37 dollars for all this trim I used versus 150 dollars
I'm adding some feet to this to raise it up to counter height because I kind of picture this being used as a bar or a coffee bar and you could be able to make drinks or coffee on top of it. So I'm just measuring where I want the feet and then I'm gonna mark some holes so I can drill some pilot holes before I screw these in. So I bought these feet before I realized that the bottom of this cabinet is not completely flush and level. So I'm gonna have to add some washers to level out my foot. In hindsight, I probably would have just ordered different feet. So if you're thinking of doing a project like this, I wouldn't recommend these feet on here, but this is what I had and we needed to get the project done. So I made it work with these washers. I also had to use different screws than the ones that came with these foot. They were gonna be too long and poke through the bottom of the cabinet. So I just grabbed some screws that were three fourths of an inch to put in here. To finish this off, I'm gonna stain the inside of my cabinet. If you know what color you're gonna do um, when you're starting this project, definitely paint or stain these panels before you put this together. This cabinet comes with two shelves. I ended up putting one in and liking the way that that looked because again, if you're gonna use it as a bar, you might have some taller wine bottles and stuff that you wanna store in there. So I didn't think that the two shelves looked good, but know that you have the option to put two shelves in here if you want to. Okay, last step, I'm gonna put my cabinet doors back on and make sure that they're nice and level. I originally thought I was gonna add some gold hardware to the front of this, but the cabinet doors actually have a built-in handle on them, so they're easy to open. And I love the way it looks, so I decided to leave the hardware off. This IKEA hack is complete. Here's the basic Ivar cabinet that I started off with, and here it is now. I love this, and I think you could use it in a bunch of different ways. You could use it as a bar, a wine bar, a coffee bar, or even like in your entryway. I love the interest and the texture it has with the trim. And surprisingly, it was really easy to put this trim on. I love the pop of the wallpaper on the back. Quick safety note, this 100% needs to be anchored to the wall. They have holes that you can do that with really easily on the back. It's very front heavy, really skinny, so it definitely needs to be anchored. Update on this one, I sold it for $300 on Facebook Marketplace, making about $140 worth of profit. And now let's check out IKEA hack number two. I have the very popular Tarva six drawer dresser, and I'm gonna be trying to make this thing look like a $3,000 restoration hardware dresser. This is what I'm gonna trim my drawers out with. I think trimming it out is gonna give it more of that look of the framed look from my inspiration piece. So this is pine lattice, and I just got it at Home Depot. You buy it by the linear foot. So I'm gonna use my miter saw and cut some angles and trim every single drawer out. So with my miter saw, I have this stand that makes it really easy to adjust where I'm cutting. So I was able to just measure one time, set up exactly where I want to cut it, and then I'm just going boom, 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 and knocking all these out. Okay, so the next pieces I need are a lot shorter for the side trim. So my guardrail here isn't gonna work, but I can actually use this uh, ruler that I have right here on the miter saw, and I'm just gonna line this up and cut all these pieces to be eight and three quarters. Okay, so I've got all my pieces cut, and in case you're wanting to do this in the future so you don't have to measure, the long pieces from end to end are gonna measure 29 and a quarter inches, and then the shorter pieces are eight and three quarters from end to end, and all of these cuts are a 45 degree cut. So these are a little rough, so I'm gonna take my sander to them and smooth them down before I apply them to the dresser. I'm gonna start with a 120 sandpaper and then finish it off with a 220. Okay, so this dresser comes with these dinky little pools. We are upgrading that. I have these long bars that are gonna look really similar to my inspiration piece. So I'm just gonna be using some DAP plastic wood, professional wood filler and filling these holes. This is becoming one of my favorite fillers recently because you can sand it in 15 minutes and I'm very impatient and I don't like to wait for my filler to dry for hours and hours. So I'm really loving this one. A couple of 
of ways you could apply this. I'm actually just gonna use wood glue. If you were worried about this falling off at all, you could do some brad nails in here. I don't wanna do that because I'm thinking down the road, I'm gonna wanna refinish this again and having just the wood glue, it'll be easier to pry those off. So you do what works best for you. And then while this dries, I'm gonna clamp this on here so it'll stay nice and secure. I obviously have lots of clamps. If you only had two clamps, you could just do one piece at a time and wait for it to dry and move it around. But the more clamps you have, the faster this is gonna go. This wood glue is paintable, but you don't wanna have big globs like that. So I'm just taking a rag and getting rid of any excess. All right, welcome back to day two. I got a lot done yesterday. I am feeling encouraged. This is starting to look like a new piece. We're transforming it. The next thing I'm gonna do, I wanna modernize the feet to match my inspiration piece. So I have marked off an angle on them and I'm gonna cut them at an angle to make them look more modern. So these feet come off really easily, which is good for, for cutting them. So I've just made like a template of how I wanted my foot to look. I have my settings all set up on my saw. And so I just placed this, lined it up, marking it here, putting my little X so I know where I'm gonna cut. We're gonna take it over to the saw and we're gonna cut it. Also last night, I filled the seams in my trim. You will get little tiny holes that won't exactly be put together. So to make it look nice and seamless, I grabbed some of this natural plastic wood, just put that in here. This takes about two to six hours to dry. So that's why I did it last night. So this is ready to sand, and then we're gonna be ready to paint. paint to stain today. I like to do this for two reasons. You get a more consistent finish. You're not working with an oil-based stinky uh, product and those rags are flammable when you're done working with them. So I just like to get a consistent color with paint. Normally I thin it down a lot and I wipe it back. I'm not going to do that because I want to cover up a lot of these knots because I want this to look less like pine and more like oak. So I'm just going to water this down a little bit and I'm going to put it on full strength. stressful part of a makeover for me when I have to drill new holes for <laughs> hardware. There's lots of math involved. This little template that I have helps. So I have this guide set up to drill my holes in, I'm trying to make them as level as possible. Here we go. Okay, I have the hardest part done. I have all the hardware holes drilled. I have this long black hardware that's gonna match my inspiration piece, but we need to tweak the color just a little bit. And I have some of this antique pewter spray. I really love using this on hardware. It holds up really well. So we're going to make these pewter now. I decided to go with general finishes, high performance and flat. This is a water-based top coat. I have this on my kitchen table and it's held up really well for me. So I am gonna use this on this dresser because this is going in my son's room 
and he's a little crazy. So we're gonna protect this thing really nicely with this. I'm gonna do most of the flat surfaces with this sponge. It's really great and applies top coat really fast. I'm just gonna mist it a little bit and get it damp before I put the top coat on it. I am so excited with how this turned out. I really didn't think I was gonna be able to do this, but this really looks like my inspiration piece and I totaled everything up and with the dresser and my wood and my supplies, I spent about $360 on this piece compared to the 3,500 of my inspiration piece. I would say that is a huge win. Real life update on this one. It is still in my son's room and this is what it looks like most of the time because he is nine years old. At least the floor is clean. Uh, one change I would make on this one, if you're gonna do this look, you need to seal the knots with shellac before you paint because they will seep through the paint like this. The spray painted hardware has held up pretty well for being in a kid's room, but could definitely be touched up. I have the very popular, very affordable Rast nightstand, and I'm gonna be giving it a high-end look. This is my inspiration piece that I'm working off today. I love the fluted look and the really cool marble top. So I'm gonna be doing an epoxy top on here that's gonna look just like marble. First time doing that. This was really easy to put together. I think this is the easiest Ikea piece that I've ever put together. This is the Rast. Um, unfortunately, it has no bottom, so I have nothing to attach these feet to. So I'm gonna cut some warts to size so I can put them in here and then attach the feet. I bought a piece of MDF for the tabletop that I'm gonna turn into a faux marble look. And luckily it is long enough that I can cut a piece to fit on the bottom as well to screw the feet in. So I've marked my cut and I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Okay, it's in. I have a nice secure surface that I can add my feet to. This is not the prettiest way to do this, but I'm fluting this whole thing. So all of this is gonna get covered up anyway. So I'm just doing it the easy way. I got these feet on Amazon. They're only four inches high. So I'm just placing them in each corner of the board to make it even, drilling some pilot holes and then screwing these to the board. long hardware holes that match my inspiration piece. Unfortunately, they don't fit the holes that are on here, so I'm gonna fill this before I start staining this. This is in pretty good shape to stain, but it does have a little bit of areas that are really rough, so I'm just gonna take a fine sandpaper and smooth everything out before I start staining. Okay, I'm ready to stain. I'm gonna be using a water-based stain in a really, really dark brown color to mimic my inspiration piece. This is water-based, so it's gonna have really easy cleanup. It's not flammable, and I think you get more even coverage because it's more like putting a paint on versus a stain. So I'm just gonna use a little applicator pad and put this on. dark so I, I'm not really gonna wipe anything back if you had stuff that was really pooling you just want to take a clean lint free cloth like this and I'm just gonna wipe it over the surface and then that's gonna just take up any excess but with a water-based stain like this there really shouldn't be a lot of excess Another benefit of using this water-based stain, it is going to dry a lot quicker than an oil-based one. So I'm gonna be able to do my fluting and work on this way faster than if I used an oil-based stain. And this one also has a protectant built into it. So I'm not gonna have to top coat afterwards.
Okay, I love the way the stain is looking. Now we're gonna get a little bit more technical and I'm gonna flute all the way around this piece. And so I picked up these wooden dowels to do this. So I've marked off how much I need to cut. I'm gonna start with the sides because that's gonna be the easiest. I know I'm gonna need a lot of these on both sides. So the easiest thing to do is set up my saw so I can make those cuts just boom, boom, boom. And they're gonna go really quickly. I got these dowels at Home Depot. They were $1.76 a piece and I ended up having to buy 60 of them to cover the entire dresser. If I would have thought ahead beforehand, I think I could definitely find these in bulk for cheaper online. So just keep that in mind. After I got all my pieces cut, the very tedious part came in where I had to sand each side. These are pretty good, but they are still a little rough in spots and they each had a sticker on them, which was really annoying. So I had to make sure all of that stickiness was sanded away. And then I'm individually going to stain each of these. The method that I came up with to stain these faster was to stack about eight of them together, stain that whole side, and then I would flip them on the next side and I stained them on all four sides just because I wasn't sure which way I was gonna nail them on and that way you don't have any wood showing through, everything is the same color. Definitely a lot of work, but definitely worth it. And since I used that water-based stain, these dried really quickly, so I was able to start attaching them to the dresser. Okay, now that I got a few going, this looks really great. So I'm just using one of the dowels in between to get that perfect spacing. And then I'm using my Ryobi 18 gauge brad nailer and I have the smallest brad nailer you can use. So you just wanna make sure that it's gonna go through your dowel as well as go through um, the hard surface that you're going into. And I'm sinking the nails a little bit so I'll be able to put wood filler on top of here and make it look really smooth and seamless. I'm just putting a nail at the bottom, in the middle, and then the top of each of these long sections. So I just decided to start with one dowel in the middle and center that and make sure it was level so that they were gonna be level all the way across. I'm still working on my fluting here, but I'm gonna start on my epoxy countertop that I'm gonna place on top of here. I'm gonna start by doing a seal coat. So that's gonna seal this and make it waterproof um, and just get a good base before we start adding the marbling. So let's go ahead and start mixing. Okay, so I needed 10 fluid ounces of epoxy for my first coat. So I did five ounces of the hardener, five ounces of the resin, and then I'm gonna stir this for two to three minutes, scraping everything off the sides and the bottom. And then I'm gonna transfer this to another cup and stir it for another three minutes. Okay, now I'm gonna add some of this white pigment. That's gonna give it the marble look for our base. And you're just gonna add this a little bit, a little drop at a time until it completely goes throughout the whole epoxy mixture you just made. Once my epoxy was fully mixed, I just placed it on the board in an S shape and then I used this plastic spreader to spread it out evenly across the top. This epoxy has a really long open time, so you have plenty of time to spread it out and any strokes that you make in it disappear because the self levels, any excess is just gonna run off the sides. This first coat is a seal coat. It's going to seal whatever you're applying the epoxy to and make it waterproof. It needs to get tacky and that'll take about four to six hours before I can add my second coat and start with my marbling. Okay, so I need to fill all these little tiny holes that I have made with my brad nails. I wanna save myself a little time and I'm gonna mix in a little bit of my stain with the um, wood filler and hopefully I won't have to do that many touch-ups after this dries. So 
since these holes are really, really tiny, I don't need to let this dry and sand it back. That is gonna take way too long and it's gonna take a lot of my finish off. So I'm just wetting a rag just a little bit and I'm removing that excess and then I'm gonna let this dry fully. I also used an artist brush to stain the top of all the fluting and I used that to do any little touch-ups that needed to be made on the dresser. I'm going to do my second coat now and the second coat is where the marbling comes into effect. So for this coat, I need twice as much. So I made 10 ounces last time. I'm gonna make actually 24 ounces this time because I also need to have a separate cup for my veining. Now, when you're gonna do veining, uh, the kit comes with light gray and it comes with black gray and you can kind of mix these two together and get some really dramatic veinings. I'm just gonna go with light gray and I'm just gonna do one color and see how that goes. For my white layer this time, I'm gonna add a little bit of this silver pearl mica powder. It's gonna make it sparkle and be iridescent a little bit so it mimics the look of marble. <laughs> So I set some of this clear aside and I'm gonna add the light gray mica powder for my marbling. This is the same process that I did on this first coat. So I'm just gonna put this out in an S shape and spread it all around and make it smooth. Once you have this all coated in the white, you can grab your mixed colors and this is where you start the veining. And this is very scary because there's just no, <laughs> there's no direction here. You just make these in a natural way, the way that you want them to go. I tried to look at pictures of marble before I started so I could see kind of how they're, you know, you don't want to go straight from side to side. You want to make them angled because in nature, that's how they're going to look. So once you get all those on, you can take a chip brush or even use your fingers that are in a glove and just kind of mush the colors together a little bit. This will create air pockets and stuff, but it will mix it up just enough so that then you can grab the air gun and blow those little heat bubbles away and it will disperse your pigment and kind of feather it out and give it a more of a natural look and diffuse it a little bit. I played with this heat gun for 30 minutes. This is just like up to you how far you wanna go, how far you wanna spread it out. It is a creative process, so just trust it. I am back. I have let this dry overnight. So I'm going to share with you what I learned. Number one, I should have primed the sides with some type of white paint, not for bonding or anything like that, but it definitely runs off the sides more than it pulls on the top. So I have a lot of that brown of the MDF coming through and I watched a lot of videos last night and it's just a good idea to paint and seal a color just around the edges that's gonna match your finished project. It's just gonna help in the end. So lesson learned there. This is dry to the touch, but it's not gonna cure completely for five to seven days. Once that happens, I can flip this over and this is sandable. So I'm going to wait that amount of time to be able to sand these drips off. They need to cure completely before you can do that. And once everything is all cured, I'm gonna use this four minute epoxy, put it on each strip of my dresser and I'll be able to apply it that way. But today we wanna see the final product and we wanna see what it looks like. So let's go ahead and just add this to the top. Okay, let's talk hardware. I originally wanted to do a really long pool like on my inspiration piece, but I can't get them to line up with the fluting just right. And I didn't wanna drill into this. That scared me a little bit. So right now I'm thinking I'm gonna do these fingerless pools, but I'm not ready to commit. So I just have them in here right now and I'm gonna live with them for a couple weeks while this cures and then I'll make my decision after that. Just to remind you, this is the Ikea Rast nightstand that we started off with and here is the after. Oh, 
Okay, this was a very tedious project, but it was really fun. I'm not completely finished with it yet, but now I have an idea of if I wanna flute a bigger piece in the future, how that's gonna go. It is very labor intensive. It is expensive to do this fluting, um, but I think it's worth it. It turned out really gorgeous. I loved playing with the epoxy. I'm shocked at how well that turned out for my first time. I've learned lots of lessons for next time, and I can see tons of ways that I can use this on other projects. So sometimes working on a piece of furniture isn't about having the most awesome completed piece in the end. It's about pushing yourself. It's about learning new techniques, and I can definitely take some of these techniques techniques and put them into new furniture. This is the most embarrassing update because I kind of just shoved this back in this hallway, stole the hardware from it, never fixed the top, never attached the top. Um, so this video is inspiring me to actually get this thing fixed, get some hardware on it and get it sold. Let me know down in the comments which project you are most excited to try and how you plan on making it your own. I will be back with another video soon. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time.